What's up, y'all? It's your boy Emerson Wendy. I'm about to sit down with the homies in the Netherlands from the Hip Hop Kings, baby. Exclusive. Well, I got my start as a producer first. Like, I used to produce under another name. I made beats for a bunch of people in the industry, like Snoop Dogg, the name one. Uh, Emerson Wendy wasn't born until like four years ago when my mom died. Like, when my mom died, gee, like, she was my best friend in the world. She was like my favorite thing. Uh, when I lost her, it impacted me in a way, like, emotionally, it opened me up to a whole new realm of emotions that I didn't even know I had or really had to deal with them positively. And, as in most things in my life, like music was right there for your boy. And for the first time, like when I would hear my own beats, things like that, I heard words over them. I never heard that before. Like I would just make instrumentals and I would send them to other people and they'd make the magic. And when my mom died, I had something to say. It was like a voice that just came up out of me. So I started writing my own music and created Emerson Wendy. Uh, the project that we just released back in May was called Heroina. You know, it included features from everybody, like Lil Wayne, Pusha T, 2 Chainz, the Raekwon from Wu-Tang Clan, uh, Birdman, uh, just to name a few, man. But on the production side, it was just as big. We had Mike Will, Made It, Mustard, Timberland, everybody. Gee, I mean, it was such a blessing that I, I was able to pull those collective group of people together for my debut project as an independent artist. Like, I still can't believe we did it, man. I pinched myself. Like, crazy, <laughs> All of them. <laughs> no, but for real though, like I love them all. But uh, for a million dollars, if I had to select one that meant the most to me besides the one about my mom and like our early struggles called I Remember, um, I'd have to say Black America. Like Black America to me, G, was... It didn't even really hit me until after the record was done and I sat back and I listened to it all because... The message on that record was just so raw, so real, so unedited. Uh, like when I was sitting in the studio that night, my man, um, I'm sitting down in the studio, I'm listening to that beat. It didn't even take me but one time to listen to the whole beat through and the beat was asking me this overwhelming question I just had to answer, or at least attempt to. And it was like, when I'm older, and my son's 18 years old. He's an intelligent young man. And he comes in and asks me, I say I'm not a big rap star. We still in the hood. So he's dealing with some real shit. And he comes to me and says, yo, dad, you keep saying when I graduate, I got to go to college. Why the fuck would I go to college? All my teachers are broke as fuck and they all got college degrees. But yeah, homeboy out here on the block, he's the one able to support his family. All his kids going to private school. And, uh, and this, that, and the third. He's got the big rams, the jewelry, all that. But my teachers always, I mean, they about to get fired every week because of the cutbacks. They get no respect. And they got no finances. So if you're telling me to go make the better decision for my life, what would it appear to an 18-year-old man that what choice would he be making? Probably to hit the block. And that's the choice that most of them do make. And that's what's sad because the only examples that they have of what a college degree can do for your life is their teachers, who we won't even make a financial commitment to, to make sure that their lives are better, so that they can then make the commitment to making sure that our youth lives are better. It's something you can't live without. You gotta have one with the other. You can't have one without the other. So I just felt like until we make the commitment to our teachers, our educators, we give them what they need to make sure that they have what they need to enlighten these young minds. I don't feel like anything in the hood's ever gonna change. Not that you can really correct all of the problems in the ghetto. I don't know. I mean, it's such an overwhelming, like, blown out problem. I don't know that any one thing will change it, but I felt like what if I could change one thing that might impact the rest of these things? I felt like it all starts with a lack of education. Because typically, anywhere you go, if you see people per capita who are educated a little better, then their society tends to be a little better where people are going to private school or wherever schools are best in America, you see a lower crime rate. Wherever schools are horrible, you tend to see a higher crime rate. So what the fuck does that tell you? It tells me that maybe 
instead of building bigger jails, we might want to invest in bigger schools, give them more books, computers, everything that they have on the other side of town. Treat the teachers better. In private school, a lot of these teachers make close to six figures, sometimes more. In public schools in the hoods, they're making like $25,000. You may as well go work at 7-Eleven. Work part-time. You ain't got all the stress. You ain't got a grade papers. You ain't got to do none of that, G. And you're only, you're only doing a little less better than a teacher. Like, that don't make no sense. So, But then the other part about the record, when I was just sitting down just trying to, like, deal with, with that one aspect of it, it opened me up to just ask questions or shine a light on the rest of the things that I see. It was just me reporting news. It wasn't me trying to judge anything. It wasn't me saying it's right or wrong. You know, a lot of that shit I do myself. Every day I get up and I make one bad decision at least every day of my life, like without fail, as most people, right? So I'm not anybody to judge anything. You know, I'm not sitting over here saying what nobody should do. This was just me saying that this is the way it is. And if anything that I said in this record offends you or bothers you, makes you feel some type of way, instead of you sitting back in your crib and your car being pissed off at the Wendy, uh, it probably only offended you because you don't like that about yourself. So you could change that. You have the ability to stop that action just as much as I do. So it's like until you decide that, then it's just going to be the same. And, you know, it was just a glimpse into what I consider like black America. There's always going to be some, some better. There's always going to be a little bit worse. But at the same time, it was just me, everything as a whole. And then when we made the video for it, I wanted it to it, da, 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 I mean, how, how can I say it? Like, I wanted it to depict exactly that. Like, there's people in there like Martin Luther King and Huey P. Newton. Some of our bright spots. President Obama's in there. No matter what you feel about Obama, that's, that's growth. Not just for black America, but for America as a whole from where we came from. Where everybody black was out in the fucking field picking cotton to now he's the head of state. He's running. That's, that's growth. Down to, you know, the crack sales, the, the homeless, you know, just non-education, shit like that. It just shows both spectrum. It's not me saying black America's bad. It's just saying that this is what black America is. There's things that we should fix and there's more things that we should embrace. We should put more of an emphasis on schooling. And if we do that, then black America has a bright future. I mean, when I made the video, I don't know that I was trying to accomplish anything. I was just trying to, I was just trying to complete the loop on my thought. Complete the loop on my art form, for say. You know what I mean? I feel like the video's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. I mean, here it is. You're in Netherlands. I mean, you're in the Netherlands. You're Dutch. <laughs> I'm American. Black kid from Oceanside. Oceanside, California. It's my home. I love it. And I'm talking to you, half a world away, about black America. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's accomplishing exactly what I could hope for, is that people are paying attention. I'm enlightening you on what goes on way over there. I'm enlightening them on what's going on right around them. I'm waking people up. I'm waking up myself. That's what I hope to accomplish. I mean, we're about to go on tour in a couple months, man. We're going over to Europe. We're going to come check y'all out. Uh, we're going to Greece. We're going to England. We're going to France, the Netherlands, uh, a bunch of places in between, man. I'm really looking forward to that. I feel like that's always been a dream of mine ever since I became an artist, was to get overseas and go expand. You know, there's all my fan base, but just open myself up. Like, I feel like traveling really does a lot for somebody like mental. It just shows you what other people deal with and like things that I'm not used to seeing being American. Being from Oceanside, California, like my environment is what it is. So every time when I was younger, when I traveled, I came back a different person because I had a different experience. I was able to walk the shoes of somebody thousands of miles away from me and it's cool. And it's just so powerful how, how hip hop crosses all borders. Like the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you. You're so many thousands of miles from, from where I grew up. 
So your realities are a little different than mine, but we share this common bond through hip hop. It's wild, man. It's just a universal language, and y'all just want to keep on respecting that and just see what it's all about everywhere. I mean, first and foremost, like I want to give y'all a shout, hip hop kings. I really respect what y'all are doing. Uh, everybody in the Netherlands, the Dutch people, boom, all of Europe. Uh, I gotta shout my team out because I wouldn't be here without them. Pearl Harbor ENT and everybody down with it. And the Wendians, last but not least. I ain't moving nowhere without their support, man. That's just real, that's deep. But the last thing I'll say, I'll just leave y'all with like a thought. A thought that I have. Now, how would you think about a world where everybody thought about every decision that they make, how it's going to affect their neighbor? Or maybe somebody 3,000 miles from here and you wanted to make that decision in a way that it was going to impact them in a positive manner, or at least not negative. I think the world would be a much better place if we lived our lives like that, you know what I'm saying? It's like me. I used to eat some gum and put the wrapper in the air. I mean, it's gonna blow wherever it's gonna blow. But you wanna know when I stopped doing that? When I found out that this plastic isn't biodegradable like that, and that somebody's gonna deal with this problem a thousand years from now, three, four hundred years from now, when this breaks down, that thought alone allowed me to sit back and be like, you know what, man, put this in the trash can, and not only the trash can, the recycle bin. You know what I'm saying? Because this isn't going to affect me. I'm not going to be here when this affects somebody. It's going to affect my kids, 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 kids. And if all I need to do is just put it in that recycle bin to make the situation a little better, then you know what, that's what I'm going to do for the situation. And I just feel like everybody, if they just made a decision like that, to think about somebody outside themselves, how is this going to affect my neighbor? How is this going to affect my kids' kids? Then I feel like that alone would make the world a better place in the future and right now. Thank you.